Hi guys, disclaimer, this video is sponsored by Nordgreen. So they're a Scandinavian watch brand from Denmark. And I'm so excited to be working with them because their watches are as good as they promise, which is timeless, minimal, and unisex with interchangeable straps. Their designs are so beautiful and simple, not flashy, just my style. But they also have wonderful other selections on their website, which I'll link down below. But I really like their advocacy the most, which is to provide clean water to educate the future generation and to protect our rainforest. So actually, every time you guys buy a watch, a portion of the profits actually go to NGOs that are in support of these. Their packaging is even upcycled, which is so cool. And the watch they sent me came with a free, cute tote bag. I feel like they're legit because if you guys go to their website, you can actually validate your purchase so that you are reassured that your watch profits goes to the three NGOs I mentioned earlier. So yeah, if you guys are interested and want to buy, don't forget to do that. And you can click the link in my bio for a 35% discount. So yeah, thank you again Nordgreen for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so I have the iPad Air 3 in space gray and only 64 gigabytes since I don't need a lot of storage as I already have a phone and a laptop. I bought this and my Apple Pencil online since we're in quarantine. I used to have a case for it but if I have it on then my iPad case won't close properly so I just took it off. And I love my iPad case because it holds my pencil well, protects my iPad, and gives me two kinds of ways to make it stand. So 3 in 1. <laughs> I also have a paper-like screen protector on. Not sure if it really helps my handwriting, but I really like the texture of it. And you don't really need this. I recently bought a three-piece camera cover set, so I put just one on my iPad because what else am I gonna do? And I have a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, but it's more for my laptop as I explained in my What's in my MacBook video last week. So check it out. But both of these works well and smoothly on my iPad. Now, I'll talk briefly about my settings to optimize my iPad. My notifications are turned off for most of my apps, especially social media, except for important stuff like email, Moodle, Canvas, Bible, and Calendar, because it helps me become more focused. Along with that, I set my Do Not Disturb mode to Always to make sure I really don't get any notifications. My app icons is set to More version because I really like the compact feel. It shows more apps and enables the Today view on the side. And Assistive Touch, which I really like and find it so convenient, it allows you to to do an action easily especially if the buttons or screen is hard to press or navigate. I also set an action when double tapping it so that I can screenshot something faster and easier. And just some other useful hand shortcuts are a forehand or one hand swipe at the screen to switch apps, then a forehand swipe or one hand upward gesture at the bottom to see all apps. And I love the multitask feature the most, available by opening one app first, drag the app you want to use as well to the side, or you could just let it float on the screen. And you can also make your keyboard smaller by pinching it, convenient if you're using one finger to type. So now in the main screen, we have the today view, which only works in landscape mode and in the more mode, as I said earlier in the app icons. And you can customize what widgets to put here for easy access and view. Usually, I keep apps here that I want to multitask with or my most used apps. First is Google Calendar, which I use to keep track of school and job deadlines. I also have notifications turned on so that I never miss one. I talked more about this in my laptop in preparing for uni video, so just check that out. Then Safari, which is a web browser, and then Notion. I prefer to edit and use this on my laptop, but I just keep it in here just in case. I also have a copy of my workspace down below if you want to duplicate and customize it. Then Good Notes 5, I use it for school, journaling, and notes for the online courses I take for fun. It can take a lot of space so I linked it and auto back it up to my only storage Google Drive through the settings. It has so many features but I think other YouTube channels better explain it than me. But basically you can highlight, add text and images, doodle, write, then customize the shape, size, weight, and colors on each. I think handwriting and highlighting only works with Apple Pencil though, I believe. Then my entertainment folder, Spotify for music, I link down below my account, YouTube and Netflix which I use the most for watching. And then Katsu sometimes I use for anime instead of watching on my laptop. Then I want for Filipino movies, VU for K-dramas, and VLC if ever I want to watch a movie on my iPad which I downloaded from my laptop. 
so I just transfer it here through iTunes. Then for Pinterest, I link my account down below. I have a lot of boards, but I mainly use it for inspiration and wallpapers. Then the last row is social media. I delete all of them whenever school starts already except for Messenger, so that I can use my iPad to focus more on studying. Now for the main home screen, the first row are all Apple apps, and I keep only the ones I like to use on screen. And here's a separate calculator app that I had to download because guys, did you know iPad doesn't have a calculator? What the heck? <laughs> then sticky notes widget, which I recently downloaded. Through this, you can add sticky notes on your screen or your today view. But the downside to this is that you have to edit it on the app itself and make it a wallpaper or a widget because it's not editable on screen. And then pocket, I also recently downloaded this and I'm so excited to use it. It saves articles and videos from your browser and applications. You can highlight and arrange them by type, tags, and list. I find this super useful because I have a lot saved on my Twitter bookmarks which I'm too lazy to go back to my saves from Facebook, Instagram, Twitter all in just one app. Then for my learning folder, first is Uversion Bible. It has a lot of features but I use it mainly for the verse of the days and reading passages for my daily devotions. Also has book plans but I prefer to use first five because they explain things better. It makes things easy to digest, read, and super relevant. Then webtoons, which I love reading if I'm too tired to read the whole worded book because these have beautiful drawings of men and women like a comic book. Then iBooks, which is a built-in app for Apple. This is where I read my eBooks. And here's a fast-forwarded video of me downloading an eBook for free. I link down below how to do it. And I love rereading my favorite books, so I like to bookmark some chapters and highlight the lines that I really enjoyed. And then next is Goodreads, which I use to find recommendations through the activity feed. And I also use it to check the reviews of the books I want to read. But through this, I track and rate the books I've read and currently reading. My goal is to read at least 20 books a year. Then the next two are online learning communities, Skillshare for quick and easy art classes, and Coursera, which my university gave us free access to on until September. Then the next three are local news channels which I don't really use on my iPad to be honest. And then lastly, I forgot Merriam-Webster dictionary which is a good offline dictionary and thesaurus. Next are my artsy applications. First is Procreate which is paid but it's so worth it. It has a lot of features similar to digital painting and Photoshop, lots of brushes, settings, and ways to adjust your work. And I mainly use it for digital painting, making initial sketches, and doodling on my thumbnail. Nails. Next is Onum, which I use to check if my next art Instagram post will fit my feed, so follow it by the way. Then Visco, which is where I edit my photos and YouTube thumbnails. And I don't really use the Visco filters, just adjust through the tools it already has down below. Then Pastel is where you can generate color schemes, and what's cool is that you can actually get colors from a photo iMovie, which I never use at all, here just in case. Then Canva, if you need to make a poster or layout for a school requirement and you don't know how to use Photoshop. This is great for you because it has a lot of templates. So you can use it for infographics, class presentations, and etc. Then Lightroom, I never use it here, mostly on my phone, but you can use it to edit photos as well. Then my utilities folder, first is Forest App, which I talked more about this in my apps I use for college videos, so check that out. But basically, this is a Pomodoro timer that can also help prevent you from using another app so you can focus on whatever you're doing. So yeah, next is Tide, which I use for relaxing sounds, for sleeping, or for studying. Then Epson Print, which I recently downloaded and I have yet to use but I used it to connect my iPad to our wireless printer in the house. Then I have the Hotspot Shield VPN. It works well and it's for free. It doesn't work on Netflix though. Then lastly, Zen Flip Clock. But I'm planning to use this for my first semester. But it's basically a clock, stopwatch, and Pomodoro timer all in one app. And it's really aesthetic. <laughs> Then my school folder, first is Gmail, self-explanatory, then Google Drive. I have unlimited storage through my school email. I place old school files here, art, work, slash YouTube, and I really love Google so much. And the files are easily downloadable and shareable to others. 
and linked to Google Drive are my Google Docs sheets and slides. They're all basically free Microsoft Office counterparts that I much prefer. It's great for both individual and group works because you can access them anywhere and make it available offline if ever. Then fourth is Quizlet, which the last time I used this was high school. It's best for classes that are heavy on terms and vocabulary. And you can use Adobe Acrobat to view, highlight, and annotate PDFs for free. But I don't use it much because I prefer GoodNotes, but it's nice because you don't really need an Apple Pencil to be able to highlight. Then Google Meet and Zoom, pretty self-explanatory. And then the last five apps are from Apple and Microsoft, basically counterparts from Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides. But I never use them. I'm not even logged in here. <laughs> but yeah, they're here just in case. Then back on my home screen are the two online learning platforms my university uses. So in class, we either use Moodle or Canvas. But yeah, that's it for the video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Thank you again, Nordgreen, for sponsoring today's video. See you guys next week.